The timeline of underwater diving technology is a chronological list of notable events in the history of underwater diving. Topic: <laughs> Pre-industrial Ancient Roman and Greek era, there have been many instances of men swimming or diving for combat, but they always had to hold their breath, and had no diving equipment, except sometimes a hollow plant stem used as a snorkel. About 500 BC, information originally from Herodotus, during a naval campaign the Greek Silas was taken aboard ship as prisoner by the Persian king Xerxes I. When Silas learned that Xerxes was to attack a Greek flotilla, he seized a knife and jumped overboard. The Persians could not find him in the water and presumed he had drowned. Silas made his way among all the ships in Xerxes's fleet, cutting each ship loose from its moorings. He used a hollow reed as snorkel to remain unobserved. Then he swam 9 miles 15 kilometers to rejoin the Greeks off Cape Artemisium. The use of diving bells was recorded by the Greek philosopher Aristotle in the 4th century BC. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 they enable the divers to respire equally well by letting down a cauldron, for this does not fill with water, but retains the air, for it is forced straight down into the water. 1300 or earlier, Persian divers were using diving goggles with windows made of the polished outer layer of tortoise shell. 15th century, Conrad Kaiser, illustrated his manual of military technology Bellafortis with a diving suit fitted with a hose to the surface. The drawing is also visible in Misthot.290.2, attributed to Hans Talhofer, which reproduces sections of Bellafortis. 15th century, Leonardo da Vinci made the first known mention of air tanks in Italy. He wrote in his Atlantic Codex Bibliotheca Ambrosiana, Milan, that systems were used at that time to artificially breathe underwater, but he did not explain them in detail. Some drawings, however, showed different kinds of snorkels and an air tank to be carried on the breast that presumably should have no external connections. Other drawings showed a complete immersion kit, with a plunger suit which included a sort of mask with a box for air. The project was so detailed that it included a urine collector. 1535, Guglielmo de Lorena and Francesco de Marchi dived on a Roman vessel in Lake Nemi using a one-man diving bell invented by Guglielmo. 1616, Franz Kessler built an improved diving bell. Around 1620, Cornelius Drebbel may have made a crude rebreather, see rebreather hashtag history of rebreathers. 1650, Otto von Guericke built the first air pump. 1715, the Chevalier Sir Pierre Remy de Beauve, a French aristocrat who served as Garde de la Marine in Brest, built one of the oldest known diving dresses. De Beauve's dress was equipped with a metal helmet and two hoses, one of them air supplied from the surface by a bellows and the other one for evacuation of the exhaled air. The Englishman John Lethbridge, a wool merchant, invented a diving barrel and successfully salvaged valuables from wrecks. <laughs> Industrial era Topic. Start of modern diving 1772, the first diving dress using a compressed air reservoir was successfully designed and built in 1772 by Sieur Old French for Sir or Mr. Freeminet, a Frenchman from Paris. Freeminet conceived an autonomous breathing machine equipped with a helmet, two hoses for inhalation and exhalation, a suite and a reservoir, dragged by and behind the diver, although Freeminet later put it on his back. Freeminet called his invention machine hydrostatigatique and used it successfully for more than ten years in the harbours of Le Havre and Brest, as stated in the explanatory text of a 1784 painting. 1774, John Day became the first person known to have died in an underwater accident while testing a diving chamber in Plymouth Sound. 1776, David Bushnell invented the Turtle, first submarine to attack another ship. It was used in the American Revolution. 1797, Karl Heinrich Klingert designed a full diving dress in 1797. This design consisted of a large metal helmet and similarly large metal belt connected by leather jacket and pants. 
1798, in June F. W. Wakim, employed by Klingert, successfully completed the first practical tests of Klingert's armor. 1800, Captain Peter Kreeft of Germany dived several times with his helmet diving equipment to show it to King Gustav IV Adolf of Sweden. 1800, Robert Fulton built a submarine, the Nautilus. 1825, Johann Patrick Jungström demonstrated his diving bell built of tin copper with space for a crew of two to three persons, equipped with compass and methods of communication to the surface, successfully diving down to 25 L's with Jungström and an assistant on board, and wrote a book on the organization of private underwater diving. 1837, Captain William H. Taylor demonstrated his submarine dress at the annual American Institute Fair at Niblo's Garden, New York City 1839 Canadian inventors James Elliott and Alexander McCavity of St. John, New Brunswick patented an «oxygen reservoir for divers», a device carried on the diver's back containing «a quantity of condensed oxygen gas or common atmospheric air proportionate to the depth of water and adequate to the time he is intended to remain below». W. H. Thornthwaite of Hoxton in London patented an inflatable lifting jacket for divers. Around 1842, the Frenchman Joseph Martin Cabirol (1799–1874) settled a company in Paris and starts making standard diving dresses. 1843, based on lessons learned from the Royal George Salvage, the first diving school is set up by the Royal Navy. 1845 James Buchanan Eads designed and built a diving bell and began salvaging cargo from the bottom of the Mississippi River, eventually working on the river bottom from the mouth of the river at the Gulf of Mexico to Iowa. 1856 Wilhelm Bauer started the first of 133 successful dives with his second submarine Seatoyfel. The crew of 12 was trained to leave the submerged ship through a diving chamber airlock. 1860, Giovanni Lupus, a retired engineer of the Austro-Hungarian Navy, demonstrated a design for a self-propelled torpedo to Emperor Franz Joseph. 1864, H. L. Hunley became the first submarine to sink a ship, the USS Housatonic, during the American Civil War. 1866, Minenschiff, the first self-propelled locomotive torpedo, developed by Robert Whitehead to a design by Captain Luppus, Austrian Navy, was demonstrated for the Imperial Naval Commission on December 21. 1882, brothers Alphonse and Theodore Carmagnol of Marseille, France, patented the first properly anthropomorphic design of ADS atmospheric diving suit. Featuring 22 rolling convolute joints that were never entirely waterproof and a helmet that possessed 25 2-inch mm glass viewing ports, it weighed 380 kg £840 and was never put in service. <inaudible> Rebreathers 1808, on June 17, Sieur Pierre-Marie Tubulich from Brest, a mechanic in Napoleon's Imperial Navy, patented the oldest known oxygen rebreather, but there is no evidence of any prototype having been manufactured. This early rebreather design worked with an oxygen reservoir, the oxygen being delivered progressively by the diver himself and circulating in a closed circuit through a sponge soaked in lime water. Tubulich called his invention Ichthyoandre Greek for fish man, 1849, Pierre Amable de Saint Simon Sicard, a chemist, made the first practical oxygen rebreather. It was demonstrated in London in 1854. 1853, Professor T. Schwann designed a rebreather in Belgium. He exhibited it in Paris in 1878. It had a big backpack oxygen tank at pressure about 13 bars, and two scrubbers containing sponges soaked in caustic soda. 1876, an English merchant seaman, Henry Floos, developed the first workable self-contained diving rig that used compressed oxygen. This prototype of closed-circuit scuba used rope soaked in caustic potash to absorb carbon dioxide so the exhaled gas could be rebreathed. <laughs> <laughs> diving helmets improved and in common use 1808, Bryce Freden designed a small bell-like helmet connected to a low-pressure backpack air container 
1820, Paul Le Maire d'Orgueville a Parisian dentist invented and made a diving apparatus with a copper backpack cylinder, and with a counterlung to save air, and with an inflatable life jacket connected. It was used down to 15 or 20 meters for up to an hour in salvage work. He started a successful salvage company. 1825, William H. James designed a self-contained diving suit that had compressed air in an iron container worn around the waist. 1827, Bodouin in France developed a diving helmet fed from an air cylinder pressurized to 80 to 100 bars. The French Navy was interested, but nothing came of this. 1829, 1828, Charles Anthony Dean and John Dean of Whitstable in Kent in England designed the first air pump diving helmet for use with a diving suit. It is said that the idea started from a crude emergency rig up of a fireman's water pump used as an air pump and a knight in armor helmet used to try to rescue horses from a burning stable. Others say that it was based on earlier work in 1823 developing a smoke helmet. However the suit was not attached to the helmet, so a diver could not bend over or invert without risk of flooding the helmet and drowning. Nevertheless, the diving system is used in salvage work, including the successful removal of cannon from the British warship HMS Royal George in 1834–35. This 108-gun fighting ship sank in 65 feet of water at Spithead Anchorage in 1783. E. K. Gorzin, a Russian naval technician of Kronstadt Naval Base a district of St. Petersburg, offered a diving machine. His invention was an air-pumped metallic helmet strapped to a leather suit and overall. The bottom of the helmet was open. The helmet is strapped to the leather suit by metallic tape. Gorzin's diving suit and its further modifications were used by the Russian Navy until 1880. The modified diving suit of the Russian Navy, based on Gorzin's invention, was known as three-bolt equipment. 1837, following up Leonardo's studies, and those of the astronomer Halley, Augustus Sieber developed surface-supplied diving apparatus which became known as standard diving dress. By attaching the Dean brothers' helmet to a suit, Augustus Sieber developed the Sieber closed Dress combination diving helmet and suit, considered the foundation of modern diving dress. This was a significant evolution from previous models of open dress that did not allow a diver to invert. Seba Gorman went on to manufacture helmets continuously until 1975. 1840 The Royal Navy uses Seba closed dress for salvage and blasting work on the Royal George, and subsequently the Royal Engineers standardize on this equipment. 1843, the Royal Navy establishes the first diving school. 1855, Joseph Martin Cabirol patented a new model of standard diving dress, mainly issued from Sieber's designs. The suit was made out of rubberized canvas and the helmet, for the first time, includes a hand-controlled tap that the diver used to evacuate his exhaled air. The tap included on its turn a safety valve which prevented water from entering in the helmet. Until 1855 diving helmets were equipped with only three circular windows for front, left and right sides. Cabirol's helmet introduced the later well-known fourth window, situated in the upper front part of the helmet and allowing the diver to watch above him. Having been presented to the Exposition Universal in Paris Cabirol's diving dress won the silver medal. These original diving dress and helmet are now preserved at the Conservatoire National des Arts et Métiers in Paris. Topic: The first diving regulators. 1838, Dr. Manuel Theodore Guillaumet invented a twin hose demand regulator. On June 19, 1838, in London, England, a Mr. William Edward Newton filed a patent, number 7695, diving apparatus for a diaphragm actuated twin hose demand valve for divers. However, it is believed that Mr. Newton was merely filing a patent on behalf of Dr. Guillaumet. The illustration of the apparatus in Newton's patent application is identical to that in Guillaumet's patent application. Furthermore, Mr. Newton was apparently an employee of the British Office for Patents, who applied for patents on behalf of foreign applicants. It is demonstrated in surface demand use. During the demonstration, use duration was limited to 30 minutes because the dive was in cold water without a diving suit. 
1860, in Espalion, France, mining engineer Benoit Rouquirol designed a self-contained breathing set with a backpack cylindrical air tank that supplied air through the first demand regulator to be commercialized as of 1865, see below. Rouquirol calls his invention regulator, regulator, having conceived it to help miners avoid drowning in flooded mines. 1864, Benoit Rouquirol met Navy officer Auguste Denerus for the first time, in Espalion, and on Denerus's initiative, they adapted Rouquirol's invention to diving. After having adapted it, they called their recently patented device Appareil Plonger Rouquirol Denerus, Rouquirol Denerus diving apparatus. The diver still walked on the seabed and did not swim. The air pressure tanks made with the technology of the time could only hold 30 atmospheres, allowing dives of only 30 minutes at no more than 10 meters deep. During surface supplied configuration, the tank was also used for bailout in the case of a hose failure. The durations of six to eight hours on a tankful without external supply recorded for the Rouquirol set in the book 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne are wildly exaggerated fiction. 1865, on August 28 the French Navy minister ordered the first Rouquirol de Nehru's diving apparatus and large-scale production started. <laughs> Gas and air cylinders appear Late 19th century, industry began to be able to make high-pressure air and gas cylinders. That prompted a few inventors down the years to design open-circuit compressed air-breathing sets, but they were all constant flow, and the demand regulator did not come back until 1937. <laughs> Underwater photography 1893, Louis Bouton invented the first underwater camera and made the first underwater photographs. 1900, Louis Bouton published La Photographie sous-marine et les progrès de la photographie the underwater photography and the advances in photography, the first book about underwater photography. <laughs> Decompression sickness recognized as a problem 1841, first documented case of decompression sickness occurred, reported by a mining engineer who observed pain and muscle cramps among coal miners working in mine shafts air pressurized to keep water out. 1870, Bauer published outcomes of 25 paralyzed Kesson workers. From 1870 to 1910 all prominent symptoms, causes of decompression sickness were established, explanations at the time included, cold or exhaustion causing reflex spinal cord damage, electricity caused by friction on compression, or organ congestion and vascular stasis caused by decompression. 1871, the St. Louis Eads Bridge employed 352 compressed air workers including Dr. Alphonse Jaminet as the physician in charge. There were 30 seriously injured and 12 fatalities. Dr. Jaminet himself suffered a case of decompression sickness when he ascended to the surface in four minutes after spending almost three hours at a depth of 95 feet in a Kesson, and his description of his own experience was the first such recorded. 1872, the similarity between decompression sickness and iatrogenic air embolism as well as the relationship between inadequate decompression and decompression sickness were noted by Friedberg. He suggested that intravascular gas was released by rapid decompression and recommended, slow compression and decompression, four-hour working shifts, limit to maximum depth 44.1 psig for ATA, using only healthy workers, and recompression treatment for severe cases. 1873, Dr. Andrew Smith first used the term, Kesson disease to describe 110 cases of decompression sickness as the physician in charge during construction of the Brooklyn Bridge. The project employed 600 compressed air workers. Recompression treatment was not used. The project chief engineer Washington Roebling suffered from Kesson disease. He took charge after his father John Augustus Roebling died of tetanus. Washington's wife, Emily, helped manage the construction of the bridge after his sickness confined him to his home in Brooklyn. He battled the after-effects of the disease for the rest of his life. During this project, decompression sickness became known as the Grecian bends. Because afflicted individuals characteristically arched their backs, this is possibly reminiscent of a then-fashionable women's dance maneuver known as the Grecian bend. 
1878, Paul Burt published La Pression Barometrique, providing the first systematic understanding of the causes of DCS. 20th century 1900, John P. Holland built the first submarine to be formally commissioned by the U.S. Navy, Holland also called A-1, Leonard Hill used a frog model to prove that decompression causes bubbles and that recompression resolves them. 1903, Sieber Gorman started to make a submarine escape set in England, in the years afterwards it was improved, and later was called the Davis Escape Set or Davis Submerged Escape Apparatus. From 1903 to 1907, Professor Georges Jobert invented oxalide, a mixture of peroxides of sodium, sodium oxide and potassium with a small amount of salts of copper or nickel, which produces oxygen in the presence of water. 1905, several sources, including the 1991 U.S. Navy Dive Manual PG state that the MKV Deep Sea Diving Dress was designed by the Bureau of Construction and Repair in 1905, but in reality, the 1905 Navy Handbook shows British Seba Gorman helmets in use. Since the earliest NO MKV is dated 1916, these sources are probably referring to the earlier MKI, MK2, MK3 and MKIV Morse and Schrader helmets. The first rebreather with metering valves to control the supply of oxygen was made. 1907, Drager of Lübeck made a rebreather called the U-Boot Retta, Submarine Rescuer. 1908, Arthur Boycott, Guy Bon Damant, and John Haldane published The Prevention of Compressed Air Illness, detailed studies on the cause and symptoms of decompression sickness, and proposed a table of decompression stops to avoid the effects. The Admiralty Deep Diving Committee adopted the Haldane tables for the Royal Navy, and published Haldane's diving tables to the general public. 1910, the British Robert Davis invented his own submarine rescuer rebreather, the Davis Submerged Escape Apparatus, for the Royal Navy submarine crews. 1912, U.S. Navy adopted the decompression tables published by Haldane, Boycott and Damant. Driven by Chief Gunner George Stilson, the Navy set up a program to test tables and stage decompression based on the work of Haldane. Maurice Furnes introduced a simple lightweight underwater breathing apparatus as an alternative to helmet diving suits. Drager started the commercialization of his rebreather in both configuration types, mouthpiece and helmet. 1913, the U.S. Navy began developing the future MKV, influenced by Schrader and Morse designs. 1914, modern swimfins were invented by the Frenchman Louis de Corlieu, Capitaine de Corvette Lieutenant Commander in the French Navy. In 1914 de Corlieu made a practical demonstration of his first prototype for a group of Navy officers. 1915, the submarine USS F-4 was salvaged from 304 feet establishing the practical limits for air diving. Three U.S. Navy divers, Frank W. Crilly, William F. Luffman, and Nielsen, reached 304 FSW using the MKV dress. 1916, the basic design of the MKV dress was finalized by including a battery-powered telephone, but several more detail improvements were made over the next two years. The Draeger Model II German Marks became standard equipment of the German Navy. 1917, the Bureau of Construction and Repair adopted the MKV helmet and dress, which remained the standard for U.S. Navy diving until the introduction of the MK 12 in the late 70s. 1918, the Ogushi's Peerless Respirator was first patented. Invented in 1916 by Ricci Watanabe and the blacksmith Kinzo Ogushi, and used with either surface supplied air or a 150 bars steel scuba cylinder holding 1,000 liters free air, the valve supplied air to a mask over the diver's nose and eyes, and the demand valve was operated by the diver's teeth. Gas flow was proportional to bite force and duration. The breathing apparatus was used successfully for fishing and salvage work and by the military Japanese underwater unit until the end of the Pacific War. Around 1920, Hanseatischen Apparate by Gesellschaft made a two-cylinder breathing apparatus with double-lever single-stage demand valve and single-wide corrugated breathing tube with mouthpiece, and a «duck's beak» exhalant valve in the regulator. It was described in a mine rescue handbook in 1930. They were successors to Ludwig von Bremen of Kiel, who had the license to make the Rukirol Denerus apparatus in Germany. 1924 De Corlieu left the French Navy to fully devote himself to his invention. Experimental dives using helium oxygen mixtures sponsored by the U.S. Navy and Bureau of Mines. 1925 
Maurice Fernez introduced a new model of his underwater surface supplied apparatus at the Grand Palais. Yves Le Priour, an assistant at the exhibition, decided to meet Fernez in person and asked him to transform the equipment into a manually controlled constant flow self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Due to post-World War I cutbacks, the U.S. Navy found it had only 20 divers qualified to dive deeper than 90 feet when salvaging the submarine S-51. 1926 Fernes Le Priour self-contained underwater breathing apparatus was demonstrated to the public in Paris, and adopted by the French Navy. Draeger introduced a rescue breathing apparatus that the wearer could swim with. Previous devices served only for submarine escape and were designed to provide buoyancy so that the wearer was lifted to the surface without effort. The diving set had weights, which made it possible to dive for search and rescue after an accident. 1927, U.S. Navy School of Diving and Salvage was re-established at Washington Navy Yard, and the experimental diving unit brought from Pittsburgh to Washington Navy Yard. 1928, Davis invented the Submersible Decompression Chamber SDC diving bell. 1929, Lieutenant C.B. Swede Momsen, a submariner and diver, developed and tested the submarine escape apparatus named the Momsen Lung. The 1930s In France, Guy Gilpatrick started swim diving with waterproof goggles, derived from the swimming goggles which were invented by Maurice Fernez in 1920. Sport spearfishing became common in the Mediterranean, and spearfishers gradually developed the diving mask, fins and snorkel, with Georges Bucat in Marseille, France, who created the speargun. Italian sport spearfishers started using oxygen rebreathers. This practice came to the attention of the Italian Navy, which developed its frogman unit Decima Flottilia Mars. 1933 In April Louis de Corlieu registered a new patent number 767,013, which in addition to two fins for the feet included two spoon-shaped fins for the hands and called this equipment propulsors de natation et de sauvetage which can be translated as swimming and rescue propulsion device. In San Diego, California, the first sport diving club was started by Glenn Orr, Jack Pradanovich and Ben Stone, called the San Diego Bottom Scratchers. As far as it is known, it did not use breathing sets, its main aim was spearfishing. More is known of Yves Le Priour's constant flow open circuit breathing set. It is said that it could allow a 20-minute stay at 7 meters and 15 minutes at 15 meters. It has one cylinder feeding into a circular full-face mask. Its air cylinder was often worn at an angle to get its on-off valve in reach of the diver's hand. 1934 In France, Bucat established a scuba diving and spearfishing equipment manufacturing company. In France a sport diving club was started, called the Club des Soulots. Club of those who are under the water. It did not use breathing sets as far as is known. Its main aim was spearfishing. Club des Soulots was later realized to be a homophone of Club des Solots, Club of the Drunkards, and was changed to Club des Scaphanders et de la Vie Soulots equals Club of the Diving Apparatuses and of Underwater Life. Otis Barton and William Beebe dived to 3,028 feet using a bathysphere. 1935, the French Navy adopted the Le Priour breathing set. On the French Riviera, the first known sport scuba diving club, Club des Scaphanders et de la Vie Soulot, the club for divers and life underwater, was started by Le Priour and Jean Painleave. It used Le Priour's breathing sets. 1937, U.S. Navy published its revised diving tables based on the work of O.D. Yabra, 1937, the American Diving Equipment and Salvage Company now known as Desco developed a heavy-bottom walking-type diving suit with a self-contained mixed-gas helium and oxygen rebreather. 1939, after floundering for years, even producing his fins in his own flat in Paris, de Corlieu finally started mass production of his invention in France. The same year he rented a license to Owen P. Churchill for mass production in the United States. To sell his fins in the USA Owen Churchill changed the French de Corlier's name Propulsors to Swimfins, which is still the English name. Churchill presented his fins to the U.S. Navy, who decided to acquire them for its underwater demolition team UDT. Hans Haas and Hermann Stelzner of Draeger, in Germany made the M138 rebreather. 
It was developed from the 1912 Escape set, a type of rebreather used to exit sunken submarines. The M138 sets were oxygen rebreathers with a 150 bars, 0.6 liter tank and appeared in many of his movies and books. 1941, the Italian Navy's Decima Flottilla Mars using oxygen rebreathers and manned torpedoes, attacked the British fleet in Alexandria Harbour. 1944, American UDT and British COP Frogmen COP, combined operations pilotage parties used the Churchill Fins during all prior underwater demonings, allowing this way in 1944 the Normandy landings. During years after World War II had ended, de Corlieu spent time and effort struggling into civil procedures, demanding others for patent infringement. Topic. The demand regulator reappears 1934, René Kamenes, from Alsace, invented a breathing set working with a demand valve and designed to allow firefighters to breathe safely in smoke-filled environments. 1937, Georges Kamenes, son of René, adapted his father's invention to diving and developed a two-cylinder open-circuit apparatus with demand regulator. The regulator was a big rectangular box between the cylinders. Some were made, but World War II interrupted development. <inaudible> <inaudible> World War II 1939, Georges Kamenes offered his breathing set to the French Navy, which could not continue developing uses for it because of World War II. 1940–1944, Christian J. Lambertson of the United States designed a rebreather breathing apparatus for the U.S. military. 1942, Georges Kamenes patented a better version of his scuba set, now called the GC-42 G for Georges C for Kamenes and 42 for 1942. Some are made by the Kamenes Company. 1942, with no relation with the Kamenas family, Emile Gagnon, an engineer employed by the Air Liquid Company, obtained a Rouquirol Dineroux apparatus property of the Bernard Peel Company in 1942 in Paris. He miniaturized and adapted it to gas generators, since the Germans occupy France and confiscated the French fuel for war purposes. Gagnon's boss and owner of the Air Liquid Company, Henry Melchior, decided to introduce Gagnon to Jacques-Yves Cousteau, his son-in-law, because he knows that Cousteau is looking for an efficient and automatic demand regulator. They met in Paris in December 1942 and adapted Gagnon's regulator to a diving cylinder. 1943, after fixing some technical problems, Cousteau and Gagnon patented the first modern demand regulator, Air Liquid built two more aqualungs, these three are owned by Cousteau but also at the disposal of his first two diving companions Frédéric Duma and Thies. They use them to shoot the film Epaves Shipwrecks, the first underwater film shot using scuba sets. In July Kamenas reached 53 meters about 174 feet using his GC42 breathing set off the coast of Marseille. In October, and not knowing about Kamenes' exploit, Duma dived with a Cousteau Gagnon prototype and reached 62 meters about 200 feet off Les Goudes, not far from Marseille. He experienced what is now called nitrogen narcosis. 1944, Kamenas died in the liberation of Strasbourg in Alsace. His invention was overtaken by Cousteau's invention. Various nations use frogmen equipped with rebreathers for war actions, see human torpedo. Hans Haas later said that during World War II the German diving gear firm Draeger offered him an open-circuit scuba set with a demand regulator. It may have been a separate invention, or it may have been copied from a captured Kamenas type set. Early 1944, the USA government, to try to stop men from being drowned in sunken army tanks, asked the company Mine Safety Appliances MSA for a suitable small escape breathing set. MSA provided a small open circuit breathing set with a small 5 to 7 liters air cylinder, a circular demand regulator with a two-lever system similar to Cousteau's design connected to the cylinder by a nut and cone nipple connection, and one corrugated wide breathing tube connected to a mouthpiece. This set was stated to be made from off-the-shelf items, which shows that MSA already had that regulator design. Also, that regulator looks like the result of development and not a prototype. It may have arisen around 1943. 
In an example recovered in 2003 from a submerged Sherman tank in the Bay of Naples, the cylinder was bound round in tape and tied to a life jacket. These sets were too late for the D-Day landings in June 1944, but were used in the invasion of the south of France and in the Pacific War. 1944, Cousteau's first Aqualung was destroyed by a stray artillery shell in an Allied landing on the French Riviera, that leaves two. Post-war The public first heard about Frogman. 1945, in Toulon, Cousteau showed the film Epaves to the Admiral Lemonier. The Admiral then made Cousteau responsible for the creation of the Underwater Research Unit of the French Navy the GRS, Groupe de Recherches Sous-Marines, nowadays called the CEPHISMER. GRS first mission was to clear of mines the French coasts and harbors. While creating the GRS, Cousteau only had at his disposal the two remaining Aqualung prototypes made by Lair Liquid in 1943. 1946 Air Liquid created La Spirotechnique and started to sell Cousteau Gagnon sets under the names of Scaphander Cousteau Gagnon, Cousteau -Gagnon Scuba Set, CG 45, C for Cousteau, G. For Gagnon and 45. For 1945, year of their first post-war patent or Aqualung, the latter for commercialization in English-speaking countries. This word is correctly a trade name that goes with the Cousteau Gagnon patent, but in Britain it has been commonly used as a generic and spelt Aqualung since at least the 1950s, including in the BSAC's publications and training manuals, and describing scuba diving as Aqualunging. Henry Broussard founded the first post-World War II scuba diving club, the Club Alpin Sous Marin. Broussard was one of the first men who Cousteau trained in the GRS. Yves Le Priour invented a new version of his breathing set. Its full-face mask's front plate was loose in its seating and acted as a very big, and therefore, very sensitive diaphragm for a demand regulator, see diving regulator hashtag demand valve. The first known underwater diving club in Britain. The Amphibians Club is formed in Aberdeen by Ivor Howitt who modified an old civilian gas mask and some friends. They called underwater diving, fathomering, to distinguish from jumping into water. The Cave Diving Group CDG is formed in Britain. 1947, Maurice Fargs became the first diver to die using an aqualung while attempting a new depth record with Cousteau's undersea research group near Toulon. 1948 Auguste Picard sent the first Bathyscaphe, FNRS-2, on unmanned dives. Sieber Gorman and Or Heinke started making Cousteau-type aqualungs in England. Sieber Gorman made those first patented aqualungs at Chessington from 1948 to 1960, popularly known as tadpole sets. Sieber Gorman and the Royal Navy expected aqualungs to be used with weighted boots for bottom walking for light commercial diving, see aqualung hash. Tadpoles. Ted Eldred in Australia started developing the first open circuit single hose scuba set known, see Porpoise, make of scuba gear. Georges Bucat in France created the first surface boy. 1948 or 1949, René's sporting goods shop in California imported aqualungs from France. Two graduate students, Andy Recknitzer and Bob Dill, obtained a set and began to use it for underwater research. Hollywood noticed aqualungs and was interested. 1949, William Beebe and Otis Barton made a record dive to 4,500 feet in the benthoscope. 1950, a British naval diving manual printed soon after this said that the aqualung is to be used for walking on the bottom with a heavy diving suit and weighted boots, and did not mention Cousteau. A report to Cousteau said that only 10 aqualung sets had been sent to the USA because the market there was saturated. The first camera housing called Tarzan is released by Georges Bucat. 1951 The movie, The Frogman, was released. It was set in the Pacific Ocean in World War II. In its last 20 minutes, it shows USA Frogman, using bulky three-cylindered aqualungs on a combat mission. This equipment use is anachronistic in reality they would have used rebreathers, but it shows that aqualungs were available even if not widely known of in the USA in 1951. The U.S. Navy started to develop wetsuits, but not known to the public. 
In December 1951 the first issue of Skin Diver magazine USA appeared. The magazine ran until November 2002. Cousteau type aqualungs went on sale in Canada 1952 UC Berkeley and subsequent UC San Diego Scripps Institution of Oceanography physicist Hugh Bradner, invented the modern wetsuit. Cousteau type aqualungs went on sale in the USA. Ted Eldred in Melbourne, Australia started making for public sale the porpoise make of scuba gear. This was the world's first commercially available single hose scuba unit and was the forerunner of most sport scuba equipment produced today. Only about 12,000 were made. After World War II, Lambertson called his 1940 to 1944 rebreather LARU for Lambertson Amphibious Respiratory Unit, but as of 1952, Lambertson renamed his invention and coined the acronym SCUBA for self contained underwater breathing apparatus. During the following years this acronym was used, more and more, to identify the Cousteau-Gagnon apparatus, taking the place of its original name Aqualung. In Britain the word Aqualung, used for any demand valve-controlled open-circuit scuba set, still continues to be used nowadays, in old times it was sometimes inaccurately for any scuba set including rebreathers. <laughs> Public interest in scuba diving takes off 1953, National Geographic magazine published an article about Cousteau's underwater archaeology at Grand Kinglu Island near Marseille. This started a massive public demand for aqualungs and diving gear, and in France and America the diving gear makers started making them as fast as they could. But in Britain Seba Gorman and Heinke kept aqualungs expensive, and restrictions on exporting currency stopped people from importing them. Many British sport divers used homemade constant flow breathing sets and ex-armed forces or ex-industrial rebreathers. In the early 1950s, diving regulators made by Seba Gorman cost £15, which was an average week's salary. After the supply of war surplus frogmen's dry suits ran out, free swimming diving suits were not readily available to the general public, and as a result, many scuba divers dived with their skin bare except for swimming trunks. That is why scuba diving used often to be called skin diving. Others dived in homemade dry suits or in thick layers of ordinary clothes. After the supply of war surplus frogmen's fins dried up for a long time fins were not available to the public and some had to resort to such things as gluing marine ply to plimsolls. Captain Trevor Hampton founded the British Underwater Centre at Dartmouth in Devon in England. False Bay Underwater Club founded in Cape Town, South Africa 1950. Rene's Sporting Goods Shop now owned by La Spirotechnique became U.S. Divers, now a leading maker of diving equipment. 15 October 1953, the British Sub-Aqua Club BSAC was founded. 1954, USS Nautilus, the first nuclear-powered submarine, was launched. The first manned dives in the Bathyscaphe FNRS-2 were made. The first scuba certification course in the USA was offered by the Los Angeles County Department of Parks and Recreation. The training program was created by Albert Tillman and Bev Morgan now known as LA County Scuba. In the USA, MSA advertised in Popular Mechanics magazine a two-cylinder aqualung-like open-circuit diving set using the MSA regulator. Underwater hockey Octopush was invented by four Navy sub-aqua divers in Southsea who got bored swimming up and down and wanted a fun way to keep fit. 1955, in Britain, "'Practical Mechanics' magazine published an article on "'Making an Aqualung' Jacques-Yves Cousteau and assistant director Louis Mal, a young filmmaker of 23, shot The Silent World, one of the first films to use underwater cinematography to show the ocean depths in colour. Fédération Française d'études et de sports sous-marins was formed. 1956 Wetsuits became available to the public. U.S. Navy published decompression tables that allowed for repetitive diving. Around this time, some British scuba divers started making homemade diving demand regulators from industrial parts, including color gas regulators. Since then, color gas regulators have been redesigned, and this conversion is now impossible. 
Later, Submarine Products Limited in Hexham in Northumberland, England designed round the Cousteau Gagnon patent and marketed recreational diving breathing sets at an accessible price. This forced Sieber Gorman's and Heinke's prices down and started them selling to the sport diving trade. Sieber Gorman gave its dry suit the trade name, Frogman. Because of this better availability of aqualungs, BSAC adopted a policy that rebreathers were unacceptable for recreational diving. In the USA, some oxygen diving clubs developed down the years. Eventually, the term of the Cousteau Gagnon patent expired, and it could be legally copied. The Silent World received an Academy Award for Best Documentary Feature, and the Palme d'Or Award at the Cannes Film Festival. 1958 The U.S. television series Sea Hunt began. It introduced scuba diving to the television audience. It ran until 1961. USS Nautilus completed the first ever voyage under the polar ice to the North Pole and back. The Confédération Mondiale des Activités Subaquatiques (CMAS) World Underwater Federation was founded in Brussels. August 1959, YMCA scuba program was founded. 1959, National Association of Underwater Instructors (NAUI) was founded by Albert Tillman and Neil Hess. 1960, Jacques Picard and Lieutenant Don Walsh, USN, descended to the bottom of the Challenger Deep, the deepest known point in the ocean, about 10,900 meters or 35,802 feet or 6.78 miles, in the Bathyscaphe Trieste. USS Triton completes the first ever underwater circumnavigation of the world. In Italy, sport diving oxygen rebreathers continued to be made well into the 1960s. 1962 Robert Stenuet lives aboard a tiny one-man cylinder at 200 feet for over 24 hours off Villefroche sur mer on the French Riviera, becoming the world's first aquanaut. Swiss diver Hannes Keller reaches over 1,000 feet 300 meters depth off California. Edward A. Link's Man in the Sea program had one man breathing helium oxygen at 200 FSW for 24 hours in the first practical saturation dive. 1964 In France, Georges Bucat creates the jet fins, first vented fins. The U.S. Navy's Sealab 1 underwater habitat project directed by Captain George F. Bond, keeps four divers in saturation underwater at an average depth of 193 feet for 11 days. 1965 Robert D. Workman of the U.S. Navy Experimental Diving Unit publishes an algorithm for computing decompression requirements suitable for implementing in a dive computer, rather than a pre-computed table. Bob Kirby and Bev Morgan formed Kirby Morgan. Three teams of ten men each spent 15 days under saturation at 205 FSW in Sealab 2. Astronaut Scott Carpenter stayed for 30 days. The film version of James Bond in Thunderball using both sorts of open circuit scuba was released and helps to make scuba diving popular. 1966 Professional Association of Diving Instructors Party was founded by John Cronin and Ralph Erickson. 1968 An excursion dive to 1025 FSW was made from a saturation depth of 825 FSW at NEDU. 1969, the first known rebreather with electronic monitoring was produced. The Electrolung, designed by Walter Stark, was subsequently bought by Beckman Instruments, but discontinued in 1970 after a number of fatalities. 1971, Scuba Pro introduced the stabilization jacket, commonly called Stab Jacket in England, and buoyancy control or compensation device BC or BCD elsewhere. 1972, Scuba Pro introduced the decompression meter, the first analog dive computer. 1976, Professor Albert A. Bullman published his work extending the formulae to apply to diving at altitude and with complex gas mixes. 1983, the Orca Edge, the first commercially viable electronic dive computer, was introduced. 1985, the wreck of RMS Titanic was found. Air India Flight 182, a Boeing 747 aircraft, was found and salvaged off Cork, Ireland during the first large-scale deep water feet air crash investigation. International Association of Nitrox and Technical Divers was founded 
1986 Apex Marine Equipment introduced the first dry sealed first stage developed by engineering designer Alan Clark, later to house a patented electronic pressure sensor named Status. 1989, the film The Abyss including an as-yet fictional deep-sea liquid breathing set helped to make scuba diving popular, the communist bloc fell apart and the Cold War ended see fall of communism and dissolution of the Soviet Union, and with it the risk of future attack by communist bloc forces including by their combat divers. After that, the world's armed forces had less reason to requisition rebreather patents submitted by civilians, and sport diving automatic and semi-automatic mixture rebreathers start to appear. 1990, during operations in the Campos Basin of Brazil, saturation divers from the DSV Stena Marianos performed a manifold installation for Petrobras at 316 metres (1,037 feet) depth in February 1990. When a lift bag attachment failed, the equipment was carried by the bottom currents to 328 metres (1,076 feet) depth, and the Brazilian diver Adelson Dorayo Santos Jr. made the recovery and installation. 1994. Divex and Kirby Morgan developed the Divex Ultrajoule 601 gas reclaim system in response to rising helium costs. Technical Diving International was founded to focus on training beyond the contemporary scope of recreational diving. 1995, BSAC allowed Nitrox Diving and introduced Nitrox Training. 1996, Party introduced its Enriched Air Diver course. 1997, the film Titanic helped to make underwater trips on board mere submersible vehicles popular. 1998 August – Dives on RMS Titanic were made using a remotely operated vehicle controlled from the surface Magellan 725, and the first live video broadcast was made from the Titanic. 1999 July – The Liberty Bell 7 Mercury spacecraft was recovered from 16,043 feet 4,890 meters of water in the Atlantic Ocean during the deepest commercial search and recovery operation to date. Topic: 21st century. 2001 December, the BSAC allowed rebreathers to be used in BSAC dives. 2006 August 1st, a U.S. Navy diver in an ADS 2000 atmospheric suit established a new depth record of 2,000 feet (610 meters). 2009 June, NAUI approved the first standard diving dress recreational diving course. The course is offered in Australia. 2012 March, Canadian film director James Cameron piloted the Deep Sea Challenger 10,898.4 metres feet to the bottom of the Challenger Deep, the deepest known point in the ocean. 2016 September, first prototype, for scientific research purposes, of an underwater navigation system that guides divers visualizing his, her georeference position within the 3D map of the underwater site displayed on a tablet device. See also Timeline of atmospheric diving suits <laughs>